spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. I think I do remember it. Big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. Uh, Peggy, really think we should go together. Power just randomly cut off right before the big reveal of who the killer's real name is, and you want to stay up here in the dark. Also, who were you on the phone with? Who were you just speaking to, Peggy? Real weird that you was talk talking to somebody, and then as the reveal is about to happen, the power cut off. I'm taking my buddy with me. I'm taking my friend. I, Peggy, you're still freaking me out. Yeah, there's something about you, Peggy, that I just can't, I can't put my, my finger on, but there's something about you and how you keep sending us out of the room for long periods of time while you get to stay in the room up here. Something about Peggy, man. I, I know we should trust her, but this, I can't. Because now that I think about it, every time we've been out of the room, something else has happened. I cannot account for Peggy's whereabouts all the time, even though she's been on the phone with us during the actual Whistling Man attack. At least, I, 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 unless she's working together with somebody. Her and Barbara. Her and Barbara do spend a lot of time together. Maybe they've been planning this together. Maybe Peggy's related in some way. Working with Barbara. This is a bad idea, by the way. Really bad, bad, bad idea. Don't feel safe doing this. Don't feel safe. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Right. Also, we're going to get knocked upside the head, aren't we? Okay, so there's this, but it's further back, I'm guessing. Like under here. Ah, there it is. I found it. That must be it. Make sure nothing creepy's going on down here. Doesn't look like it. Oh, Button press. We've got power. Protect me, doublehead. I need to warn Peggy. Right, sure. I'm sure we need to. Oh, we're so screwed. Don't touch me. 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 Oh, I've got my double legs protection head. I don't know why you're after us. I didn't do anything. I didn't even know the guy. I just moved here. Oh, Peggy, I'm on my way, buddy. I am on my way, unless you're the whistling man, in which case I am not on the way. I'm leaving. Are we almost there? Peggy? Peggy? What the hell? What the hell is right? I don't know what happened, but you just knocked over my entire controller with that vibration. What? What did I miss? Somebody's got to pause that because I missed it because I got scared and my controller fell and I looked away. What did I miss? Oh, God. I'm going upstairs. Going upstairs. Going upstairs. On air. But we're not on air. Peggy! I told you you should have came downstairs with me. Oh, no. Not good. Oh, no. Peggy! Where'd you go? <gasps> oh! No way. This can't be happening. Oh. Oh. Oh, this isn't creepy at all. That was mad creepy, dude. Um. A, a call. Where's Peggy? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show, but it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still, so let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of here. Mouthing. You crazy bitch! Let me go! Where is the person at? Here, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then... 
Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. Oh! Don't mind him. He's just shy. So there were two whistling ones. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God. Ooh. I don't, don't talk to, don't talk to her. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest... I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I mean, I don't have a problem doing it, but let's just play the game. Why should I help you? Why, why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? You have no goddamn idea, Forrest. These people... all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. What is she hitting you with? Now, I know you've done some good work tonight, piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago, and that's why I want you to interview us. interview you uh, all right i can do that thank you i want you to help me and teddy tell the story forrest do a good job and hell you might be the only one to leave here alive <laughs> okay am i on the chopping block as well then i need to drag this out if i can buy leslie time to get back to gallows creek and if i can find out where marie is then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Oh boy, here we go. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't start talking. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up, and when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. All right, Mooney vanished. We gotta keep him talking, so... What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised. No one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought... Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. We 
is I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. Yeah. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, everyone ran, screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. But it can't be Peggy, because Peggy would have known right, that. Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... <sighs> it doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid I got it. prank. Yeah, don't hit him, Marie. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on. I... Oh, God damn that it. That sounded wet. Jimmy George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help. Just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but... Whistling man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. How did you feel? What happened next? Who was it? Uh. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused and... Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. One minute up, he handicapped. Stops. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy! George fell off Whistling Point. Where were you? Why'd he fall? Where were you? When it happened? I, uh... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd 
had any brains, he would oh, have wow. realized. You want to die. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Even if you then why the cover up, I believe her. If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no, that coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. What about Murphy? You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Set. Shot the winning throw. School gym, the football field, the roller rink. I don't know. Shot the winning throw. Shot the winning throw. I don't know. Where did where did it? You don't. I'm gonna go with the school gym. I don't know where she would shoot him. Oh. Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Nothing Woo! matters. But yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So, Marie, where? Oh my God. Peggy. Teddy. Why is Peggy You've there? Got to help me. I quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to 
talked to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god, I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Oh boy, that explains it. Wait, what? Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. You remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. That my sister <clears throat> is the whistling man. Well, we said Peggy was in on it, in a way. Too, Connected. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me. Yes. Or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... She's lost it. Is that why you attack you attacked Eugene? Who's Eugene? I uh, wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Uh, Eugene Stein. I remember Eugene. Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. Oh. Got themselves killed in a bus accident. So she didn't have anything to do with that. And since only their child was left. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. Wow. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Uh. <laughs> uh. Prove Peggy didn't forget Marie. Prove Peggy didn't forget Marie. Prove Peggy didn't forget Marie, y'all. What are we looking for? Something. It hurt to be forgotten. I never forgot you. Well, no one's gonna forget now. Oh, I got it! I got it! Peggy! No! Oh. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Kill him. I got it. Oh God. Henry. You oh boy. Have to do this. There's still time to make the right decision. Oh boy. Leslie, how's Peggy? She. Oh my God. Peggy. I found it. Where's Marie? Gone. Bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. I found it. Look at all these people we saved. In the dead of night, I can hear you calling to me. Hey. 
except for Peggy. I had it in my hands, y'all. It was right there. We could have saved Peggy. I just... Oh, we had it right there. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. That was our gameplay, right? That was our ending. That was our story. That entire time I suspected Peggy and she was actually a good person. And of course that person ends up dead. The only person that we would have cared to save ends up dead. That's just how my stories seem to go. They're always sad as hell. However, we got an achievement there that said the end question mark, which leads me to believe there's a different ending, a real ending. And my goal is to find that ending. I enjoy this game so much that I don't mind going back in it. And I'm going to go back in. Now I'm going to save Peggy, though. I'm going to try and save Murphy. I'm going to see what happens if we save every single person. So it's going to take me a little bit, but that's what I'm going to do right now. I will see you, hopefully, when I save Murphy, and when I save Peggy. Here. What? Dallas Creek Council, Henderson Disposal, and White Ridge Municipal. What? Oh, oh, that's why it gave us the name. Oh! Open the Henderson container. That's what the newspaper was for, not for the shredder to tell us which one to open. Huh, go figure. The really <gasps> I found him! Go figure. Let's go! Let's hold ass! It's coming down! I do wonder how this changes the story, though, because we don't really mention Murphy in the rest of the story after, oh, and at least not in our playthrough. We got you killed, Peggy. Thank you. I'm sorry, Peggy. Thank you. And, I'm sorry. and I swear to you, now, I'm gonna raise Fernando to be like you. A radio I'm host? Getting my money back from Mr. Robin. Hey, you just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Oh, that's a happier ending than what we well, got. folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another okay. of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they All have to say. All we have to do now is save Peggy at the end, and we will have our ending. There's a lot of gameplay ahead, though. There's at least like two hours worth of gameplay ahead of me, but all of this just to save Peggy, and also I want to see that ending, so. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say you. as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando. If I didn't try to help, you know? Appreciate it spelled wrong, but who cares? This is new. I've been playing for like an hour now, trying to get back to where we were, to Peggy. Uh, good dad. You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with was a man, Ah, uh, that's the clue he would you provide. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man... How could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything Sexist. about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? I'm just confused. 
why were you attacked then? Nothing. You and Fernando just stay safe. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, Why'd man. you call? Now, if you'd have asked me about gators... Forrest, we have a call coming in. Okay, well, at least Sorry, we got Murphy, this all that new piece of information. We are so close right to the end. Like, uh, so all right, close. Alright, I'll catch y'all with the gator talk Ooh. later. Not. Well, it's folks, worth it. It's worth it. But perhaps our next caller it's has worth it. more they can tell us. Let's find out. Hey, at least we get to see that part we missed earlier. Finally, all the way at the end. That took forever. But we did it. What the hell? Oh, I didn't miss anything. Okay, I thought there was actually something to be seen. It was just the, so the noise. Interesting. All right, well, uh, let's get to the last part of this. Like oh, here it comes. Here we go, y'all. Here we go, here we go, here we go. God. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She oh. She kept it here on her desk. Oh, what? I didn't even pick it up. The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Oh, she was too young. That's why she didn't know about the boyfriend. Uh huh. How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. I... Peggy! Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Whoo, that took forever to get back to. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. Good night and good morning. Let's make tomorrow better. It's been a scream. And it's been a scream. It only makes sense. That's the whole theme, right? That's what we wanted to see. A board that is free of X's, a board full of life. It's almost like X to C. I don't know what that was, I'm sorry. The point is, we lived, and everybody else lived, and I am so proud of us. This is a nasty ass apartment. I don't know what's going on in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are here on the Steam page for Killer Frequency. I'm going to start with this. This game, without a doubt, without a second thought, without a backtrack, without me having to pause to say it, is easily top two best games we've played this year so far. I don't, I can't see there being too many other games that I would put above this. Granted, there's not a lot in terms of gameplay, but for what there is, man, I had so much fun. I love this world. I love this art style. I love the game direction. I love the story. The story was so good. This is just one of those, I, I don't even know, like one of those kind of like Firewatch stories, but better than Firewatch to me because there was more to do in this game than there was in Firewatch. I love the puzzles. I love that they were the perfect mix of difficult, but also super simple. I love this killer. I love it in the background. I love that there was actual fear felt while you're walking these corridors because you truly don't know if you're up for danger or not. I could easily, replay this game which is why i had no problem going back just to see the peggy saving ending granted there wasn't that much difference and i'm still happy i still gave this game a 10 out of 10. this game is just it's one of those rare moments where everything came together to work perfectly right the cartoony and, and bright colors of the game world the story that's kind of like kind of dumb but also kind of perfect peggy oh my god the voice actors peggy Forest, everybody was just like on the next level of perfection. Like there were a few moments that kind of felt a little cheesy. And I don't know if that was a script or just uh, direction or the way that the actor decided to say it, but 99% of it was just flawless execution. Like everybody honed in on their character and made them come to life. And I mean, I just found out this game could be played on VR. 
at least that's what i read somewhere i don't know how true that is but if that's true i want to replay this game in vr so much so that i don't own a vr set but in the middle of playing my second playthrough i went ahead and just went and bought a meta quest 2. that's how much i enjoy this world man this is just a game that comes together perfectly i cannot stress that enough you've got three endings you got the two endings we saw and then there's one more ending that i believe an article said you had to basically kill everybody to get that ending i don't plan on doing it just because the only drawback the only drawback to replay this game is that it is so dialogue and narrative heavy which i enjoy i love a good story that's part of the reason i play video games is because i believe there are great ways to, great ways to tell stories that movies and comics and books just can't do but on a narrative heavy game that you can't skip the dialogue it takes a long time to get to the point you want to get you can cheat it a little by knowing what the answers are beforehand and kind of going ahead and just you know in certain certain puzzles here and then that moves you ahead forward but you still got to go through the dialogue and as we saw with or i don't know if I, sh I showed it or not but there was that puzzle when we had to go into reggie's office and i went to put johnson's name as the person the medic that you need to call and his name didn't pop up because i didn't put the little key card i mean the floppy disk inside the computer so maybe there are moments in the game where if you don't do a particular thing you can kind of lock yourself and screw yourself out of progressing the way you want to progress but uh, that is it only drawback is that you can't skip over the negative so it's going to take you it's still going to take you a minute to get through the dialogue but damn it i still love this game come on bro like it just works so well for a game that's so zany and cartoon like it does have legitimate tension to it like you're not gonna you're not gonna piss yourself or anything like that right like you're not gonna change your draws or anything like that but you are gonna feel some sweat a little bit just every once in a while you'll be like Oof, i don't know if i want to go downstairs so i can only imagine that'd be 10 times heightened in vr can't wait to see this game catch on i'm sure it's gonna blow up once the right person plays it and i i look forward to seeing that person play it whoever that person is it's gonna be awesome i hope you enjoyed this playthrough i enjoyed the playthrough hopefully you're sharing in this emotion if you figured out the story let's talk about that story real quick right because i love that the story although simple doesn't necessarily uh lend itself to being figured out super early but you could you could it gives you real clues to try and decipher which is dope because some stories withhold key information so that you can't really figure it out and that it kind of cheapens the story because at the end you're just like oh i would have never seen that coming because i never met that character or i didn't know this piece of information this one gives you all the information and it's just you know it unfolds in a realistic way and i think we figured out the story with you know within a good amount of time before it was actually revealed to the point where like people were revealing we're like yep we already knew that no we figured that out we it just felt so good because the narrative was so strong the, the mystery was so strong was it the best story eh, I didn't, no but it was a good story it was a strong story i wouldn't watch it on a television show but for this i, I loved it as the backdrop to the world and then just the the layers to the characters and their their kind of how they all connect i thought was really strong and i would love to see a sequel to this and go even further with the mystery of the small town and what 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 it all means i thought the mayor reveal made sense and obviously we saw that coming i just wish the, the mayor had been a little bit stronger of a character so that when it was revealed that he was the one that was kind of the mastermind of this plot this prank that went wrong it hit a little bit stronger it didn't feel like when they were like oh it's mayor blah 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 and then also when it was like oh it's maria campbell we were like <gasps> no what it was just like oh okay cool still liked it but i felt like there could have been a little bit more of a gut punch which is why i was leaning towards peggy because that would have been the real like oh no not peggy we love peggy though i am glad peggy turned to be a good person because that means and killer frequency too and there's got to be a killer frequency too peggy can come back and join us in the booth because peggy and forrest dude hats off to their voice actors brought those characters to life love 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 those characters cannot wait to see them in something more i hope we see them in something more. I've got to stop talking now, right? Because I could go on and on on how much I love this game. Seriously, check it out for yourselves. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for joining me. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, leave a like, leave a share, leave a comment. Tell us your thoughts on Killer Frequency. Share what your opinion on the story was, the, your opinion of the gameplay, your opinion on the voice actors, whatever you want to share, please feel free to share it. And also while you're down there, maybe leave a game suggestion in the comments below that you'd like to see on the channel because we love playing games for everybody. Just ask Erica who recommended Yumi Nikki, which we had finished before Killer Frequency. That's all I got. Thank you all so much for joining me. I was your host, JLW, and I look forward to seeing you in the next series. <gasps> Deuces.
suspect cornered at the top of Whistling Point. <laughs> Nobody else has to get hurt. 